Good morning. Thank you. Thank you all for joining this course. We have configured this course, titled Landscape Design and Site Planning, based on a long experience over the last 32 years. I had been teaching this subject at undergraduate level as a subject called Landscape Design and Site Planning, and at the postgraduate level as a subject called Landscape and Recreational Planning. The body of knowledge that you have created, we felt that it should be shared with all of you. And thank you again for joining this. My experience says people have a very, very sketchy idea about this particular course, landscape, especially landscape. Whenever I have talked to people, tried to know that what is their perception about landscape, I have seen people say that, okay, plantation of some trees, if there is any surface which is bare, cover this with grass and put some pathways over it and make it accessible. People think that's landscape. There are others who think that if I do some bit of gardening in front of my house, it's landscaping. Some people think if I do kitchen gardening behind my house, that's also landscaping. In fact, the landscape course is spanning over a large domain. It's not so simple. To my dismay, what I have found is architects, they have made a very interesting, attractive presentations with trees marked as circles placed wherever it looks good on a piece of paper. The point is that they have not really realized that how it is going to be placed on site. In reality, when they'll be placed on site, there will be a lot of restrictions in terms of constructions, in terms of dimensions, in terms of many other environmental factors. All these makes the particular subject as very, very complex. So it is not, my dear friend, don't think that this particular subject is a, a merely a pattern making game. Let us see what are the scope in this. See, it is basically a multidisciplinary subject. Here we have certain sections as behavioral sciences. We also have another section which will cover general sciences and another set which will cover engineering and technology. Now what will come under behavioral sciences? People will experience a landscape, they will enjoy, they will appreciate, they may criticize as well if it is not made up to their expectations. So everyone is psychologically involved once they see a landscape. We will come to the definition of the landscape and how the landscape should be perceived later. First, whatever is your perception, just think that how you perceive the landscape. You enter a park, you see plantations, you like it or you may not like it. The plantations which you have seen might create shades for you. Which tree, which shrub, what kind of grasses, which material, how you are using it. All these are a matter of concern to you when you are really experiencing this. That becomes behavioral. If you enjoy the landscape, it's behaviorally positive resulted. If you don't enjoy, it's behaviorally negatively resulted. What comes in general science? If you enter a park, you'll find there are lots of plantations. There are water bodies, there are sands, there are lights, there are shadows. All these will be concerning general sciences. So landscape cannot be devoid of whether people like it or dislike it, whether they feel comfortable or don't, or whether the light is coming, plant is growing, or plant is dying. So naturally, the entire system will have these two. But when it comes to the execution of the entire landscape, then engineering and technology will come in. In the absence of engineering technology, rather I would say in the absence of proper or appropriate engineering and technology, no landscape can be perfect. Let us see, in the behavioral sciences, there are multiple aspects which comes under this. Quite often I have heard asked by students, sir, who all are involved in this entire landscape process? I have found that 
it's really a very widely multidisciplinary field. There are several people who are involved in it. Just you'll get an idea once I run through this one by one. Let's say behavioral sciences, psychology. You like the landscape, you want the landscape, you enjoy the landscape, and you retrieve or go back to the same landscape once again being attracted. All these are a matter of psychology. I would say psychologists who are dealing with these reactions, they are very much involved in this. Sociology, a park which is being visited by different age groups, whether it's from toddlers to the grannies or grandparents, mothers, fathers, with brothers, with friends, whoever, that becomes a hub for sociological communications, interactions. So it is very, very essential that sociology becomes an integral part of this landscape. Special, the space, how it is worked, what is the shape of it, what's the size of it, what's the dimension of it, what's the volume of it, and there are multiple components within it. All this becomes very, very critical in this. We will discuss all these issues in detail in different parts of it in due course of time. Here I am just trying to give you an overview of this. Aesthetics looks good. What is aesthetics? Aesthetics is basically a state of mind when you enjoy something. If you are not in that particular state of mind, then aesthetics does not really play any role in it. You like it, you have entered, you enjoy it. That means you are aesthetically you are enjoying it. Anything that you create, anything in the world that exists in front of our eyes definitely have some bit of aesthetic or aesthetic appeal or maybe negative aesthetic appeal. So aesthetics. So people who are dealing with beauty, people who are dealing with creations, people who, who are dealing with creativity, they are all involved in this. And finally, in terms of behavioral thing, experience. You see a landscape, you enjoy it. Finally, what is your experience? If it is good, you go back. If it is not good, you reject. The point is the whole landscape projects which we create, we the landscape architects, whether we call it landscape designers or landscape architects, whatever we do create, ultimately it is for whom? It is for people. If there is not a single user in any of these areas, that landscape has no real meaning. Of course, nature has created. Nature has created this particular landscape endowed to us, free, given to us, whether we can explore or enjoy that, that, uh, that is on us. So here what happens is finally the experience matters the most. It is because of which people go, go back to some of the tourism spots very frequently. People prefer one tourism spot over another. People prefer one landscape garden over another. People prefer one tree over another. That means it all depends on finally what is the outcome, what is the takeaway to the users. If the users are not there, then it is meaningless. Now the question is, who are the users? Of course, we will say, we, the human being, we are the users. Is it? Is it true? You enter a park, you see a bird, the bird who is having a nest in a tree, and you are enjoying the beauty of the tree along with the birds. Birds has no business other than his residence, but you have a business to see a bird. Don't you feel excited when you see very rare birds, colorful birds playing in that particular area and ultimately chirping, making a wonderful background sound and you enjoy and you say it's wonderful. Means overall experience what you gain out of this is one of the very, very important thing. Let us see what is in general sciences. Plant science, one of the most important scientific matters that we deal with in our landscape subject. You know why? because landscape, it covers a large domain. Of course, it has a different scale. I will discuss it later, scale wise. But the thing is, generally when we see a landscape is a large outdoor open area, when we see this, majority of those areas are covered with plants. Plants of various types, plants of various, various scales. So naturally, the plant science becomes the most important. Here comes some conflict in terms of perception. People say, who are the botanists, they are the best landscape designer. Horticulture say, no, we are the best landscape designer. 
the arboriculture people say no, no, we are. The plant scientists who are dealing with the tissue cultures and others, they say no, we are most important. Point is, let's not fight. It's not, not at all proper because plant science is one of the component of the entire landscape. When you go through the entire course, then you'll realize that how wide the domain of this landscape is. Next, the climate. The plants will grow. Plant has to, if the plant has to grow, then there has to be rain because it has to supply water. It also has to have radiations. That means the sun rays have to fall on it. It has to have winds flowing. Sometimes even winds flowing in a very high speed becomes detrimental to the landscape. So climate plays a very, very important role in this. Another thing is, look at this. In a very hot summer, you are sweating. And then you look at a tree. And then you try to take shelter below that and feel very, very comfortable. That means your environmental, climatological, microclimatological, all aspects are very, very pertinent. In. It makes it very wide domain, isn't it? It does. Then, the environment. What is environment? Environment is the totality. Whatever you have, you define a domain, and whatever is its condition at that point of time is the environment. And that particular environment, it is good or bad, whether it's polluted or clean, whether it is enjoyable or not enjoyable, all these are a matter of decisions that you take based on the criterion. There are multiple criteria based on which we can evaluate the environment. But however, the environment, the environmental scientists, the environmental engineers, everybody has a role to play in this. Then, chemicals. How come chemical comes into the landscape? It's a nutrients for the plants, which is required. It's a pollution that is causing decay or death to the plants because of the uh, all the emissions coming from the nearby industries or some other places. So it matters. But however, chemicals plays a very important role when it comes to the nutrients, fertilizers and all. Okay. Then engineering and technology. In this, let us see. It's basically see what it is dealing with is soil. How soil is coming under the engineering and technology. The entire landscape is spread over the surface of the earth, the crust of the earth. Once it is spread over this crust of, crust of the earth, naturally its profile, its stability, its condition, its physical, chemical and other conditions, everything will matter. So they come under the engineering sciences. And how you deal with this in terms of ground modeling, they will come under this soil. Drainage. The area which is highly exposed to the rainwater, even highly exposed to the storm water which is coming from other sides to the sides of the landscape, or even the bit of dew that has been formed by the trees, or the fog that has been formed by the climate, which will add bit by bit to the precipitation level or the water content or the humidity content of that particular area. However small it is, you will feel that if you see, spread your hand in a dew formed area, then you will find that there will be a you know, thin layer of water. If it is on your palm, the whatever amount of water, just you think the entire area is now going to have that water, that particular water is now going to cause a concern of drainage. So it comes. When the project becomes too large, the landscape project becomes too large, when there are streams, there are you know, canals, there are rivers, there are oceans, there are estuaries that we do consider, drainage becomes all the more critical, highly technical, highly engineering oriented. Then comes construction. All said and done, everything has to be constructed because we are creating it. We are creating something new. When I will come to the categorization of this, you will see that I will deal with this in a different perspective. But here, landscape, if you are saying that we are designing something, naturally it has to be constructed. And if the landscape has to be constructed, its entire construction, engineering, technological aspects, all is implements, all is machineries, everything will come under this scope. So how come it is not multidisciplinary? Then comes material, where we consider plant as one of the strong material. Okay, plant means vegetation of different forms. We consider this as a bulk material because it covers a large area. But mind it, the pathway, the railing, or the fences, the seats and benches, the lampposts, everything will matter. The pathway, even over the pathway, 
there are multiple materials that you you can use for the pathway whether it is paved with brick whether it's with concrete whether it's cobble whether it's pebble whether it's sand whether it's logs everything matters so here material will become very very important lighting we always presume that the landscape is going to be experienced in the daylight not necessary there are several landscape projects where you really see a different kind of ambience in the night and i would always suggest that if you really want to enjoy landscape you see that in different seasons see that in different time of the day then you will really realize how good the entire landscape is so that makes the entire subject very multidisciplinary and the question is okay this is i'm trying to give you an overview that what landscape is i'll come to the definition of it but how this course is structured let me give you some idea about it also i have to give you some idea about who would benefit you have registered but the thing is you have registered with some objective okay you want to learn this particular subject is it beneficial to you how would it benefit i will clear it out how to learn okay the thing is let's go ahead with this the structure what we have done is we have split the entire domain of knowledge to two parts because it's a vast body of knowledge and it really justice cannot be done with a very short duration of courses so what you have done is the entire knowledge palette we have divided into two parts series 1 we call which is which will be dealing with basics and fundamentals and the series 2 we are calling which is going to deal with the advanced applications of this first we have to understand that how a landscape is created and then how it can be applied in different areas so when it comes to this the series 1 will be mainly dealing with the behavioral issues and the plant sciences and the series 2 will deal with the engineering issues and the applications series 2 will be offering later in future at this moment our domain of discussion will be focused within this series 1 Series one will have eight weeks lecture. Each week will be of two and a half hours duration, as you already know. The first, which we have started with, is dealing with the overview. So I'm giving you the overview. Then I'll discuss about the categories of landscape. Then I'll discuss about the materials, purpose, scopes, so that whoever takes this particular subject can really handle this in one's own way week 2 will be dealing with classical historical landscape styles and also 3 will be dealing with classical historical landscape style but since there are so many very very important landscape styles we call this classical because it has become almost a sort of synonymous with such kind of styles with such kind of locations historically so they need to be divided into two parts we have tried to divide in two parts oriental and european of course we'll also be dealing with we'll give some overview when we'll be discussing this how they are being used in our current scenarios or the contemporary situations so up to week 3 we'll be dealing with historic landscape style in week 4 we'll go deep into the user related issues you remember i have discussed about the behavioral issues those will be dealing with it and there are so many things to learn you will see at some time you might think that are they really important but you will realize yes it is important an example let me give you a rather i would always like to give this example visiting a zoo a zoological garden you enter is it really true that you always go there to see only the animal and is it all right that if suppose i put all the animals in the cages and you go and see the zoo no you want to see this the animals in their own conditions so animals in their own conditions means forest or natural conditions the moment the natural conditions come rocks water body forest everything will come in so what happens is the best possible zoos are designed in such a way that when you enter you think that you have entered into a forest because here the users are not only you who is a visitor paid some money for the tickets but here the users are the people who are maintaining it also the users of the animals who are residing in that particular area so user related issues are very very important thing we'll deal with it 
In week 5, we will be discussing about the planting design. We will straight away go to the planting design first. The reason is that since our common perception is that okay, plantation means landscape, trees means landscape, a flowery garden means landscape. So, you will think yes, this is important. So, we will cover this because we have a lot of things to cover in this. Week 6, in which the plant characteristics for application to the landscapes will deal with it. In week 7, we will be dealing with all planting support system and maintenance. This is very important. You plant a tree, you must have experienced yourself that during this season, when you are planting a tree, you have to take so much of care. If you do not take care, if you do not think about its nutrition, if you do not think about its water requirement, if you do not think about covering or allowing the light to fall on this, the plants will not grow, rather it will not survive. So, this is the domain where planting support system and maintenance will be dealing with. Then in the last week of this particular course or this particular module, I will be dealing with sites investigation, analysis and appraisal, because whatever you design, the site investigation will almost will be you know preceding the design actions and many of the design actions will evolve from this. We will go into this in detail and what lies in the second series here, which will be another 12 week which will be offering later in future. First, I will very much appreciate if you learn this session series 1 and give us the feedback and have your queries made your all fundamentals clear, then you will find there are many more issues which you will be discussing in which different other aspects like how to do the ground modeling, how to plan the design uh, drainage design, how to make the irrigation planning and what are the different construction details that is involved in the landscape, what are the furnitures coming in, what should be the design, what should be the material, how an avenue should be landscaped, how the highway can be landscaped and how a terrace can be landscaped, how the indoor can be landscaped, everything. Then large complexes, housing, commercial complexes, parks, forest, brownfields, waterfronts. Then we will go into the detail like bonsai planning, aquatic garden, rock garden, aromatic and herbal landscapes. All these will be coming under the scope of series 2. So, here at this moment we are in the series 1. Next question is who would benefit from this course? You know we would say the different benefits are for different target groups. It all depends that which target group you belong. If you are a student, let us say uh, it depends on your background level or exposure of knowledge. If you are a student studying architecture, you would love to learn this particular subject as a course of study. Because no architecture courses are offered in this country, I am sure, where landscape is not taught. But I will tell you the landscape is not being taught in all institutions in the same way, because different teachers have their different exposures, different perceptions. So, naturally what happens is that they try to frame this course as they feel fit, perfect. There is no issue about it. Only thing is that if you are trying to learn the entirety, I am sure even one semester course does not give enough opportunity for this particular course. So, here I feel that if you attend this course and carry on with this, your exposure will be quite wide. So, it is a students. If you are a student, you will be highly benefited. Even I would say if you are a teacher in a school of architecture, you will be benefited. Because many things we will be exposing here, which you also probably might have missed or in case you have not missed, probably it will enrich your further knowledge and I would be very happy if suppose we get the feedback from you and then you continue with this, because finally our intention is that this entire body of knowledge should be disseminated to the people. First is the background level of your exposure or knowledge, there could be experts, then purpose of learning with a student or a professional or nursery owner or connoisseur. Let us come to this. Okay, as a student, as I said, I'll look at the professional. If you are a professional architect or professional engineer and you have got a scope of designing a landscape for a particular project, in such cases, naturally your first attempt would be to fall back on whatever knowledge you have. We are sure that if you go through this entire process of this body of knowledge, you will be exposed to all aspects of the landscaping, so that professionally you can undertake this project and you can deliver. 
and you can deliver to the full extent. Nursery owners, these nursery owners are the people who are highly responsible for giving us the right plants. When they will give us the right plants, basically they will be responsible for growing those plants the way it should be. And the health of those plants will be at the hand of the nursery owners. So, they are also important. So, they can also learn through this particular subject. Because most often what they do is the nursery owners, I have communicated with many, I have found that they are more concerned about how to keep, how to grow the plants, how to germinate from the seeds and how to make it to the saplings and how to sell it to the market, to the people, to the houses or to the landscape projects and then how this should be kept healthy. That is their domain. Here, if they have the full idea about the entire landscape process, landscape design process or their scopes, then naturally they will be more concerned about how to take care of the plants which they are growing. The connoisseurs, who are these connoisseurs who loves landscape and I am sure everybody lo loves landscape. I have never found anybody who said, no, 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 I do not like landscape, no. I do not like to see the tree, I do not like to walk on the grass, I do not like to see the colorful flowers, no. Connoisseurs are the people who like more than our common people. We all like it, but the connoisseurs are a person you will find in somebody's garden, somebody just scooping out some time of his and trying to do a little bit of plantations with a pot. He is not expert, but he is connoisseur. He is trying to know how to do it. I have seen people, a professor who turned out to be a connoisseur bonsai grower. I have seen person, an engineer who ultimately became a bonsai expert in the world. We will discuss this, we will expose them to you in future. Another group, intention to implement the knowledge in their daily life. If suppose you are a family person and you want to implement this knowledge into your daily life, it will be very, very useful. And then intention of spreading the knowledge among others for awareness. That means you make people aware, you make the children aware, you make the people who are destroying the nature or destroying the landscape aware. So, I will give you an overview of this. Now, I will go into detail and explain to you what a landscape is. It is a very interesting domain we are entering into and we will be discussing this in detail. Thank you for joining.